Part 1. You are going to hear a conversation about purchasing a cellular phone. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 1 to 6. Excuse me, can you give me some information about purchasing a cellular phone? Of course, my pleasure. We carry all sorts of phones, from the most basic phones to very sophisticated web-enabled phones. I will do my best to help you find a phone that suits your needs. Thanks. I'm looking for two cellular phones, one for me and one for my son. I think I won't need anything too sophisticated, just your basic phone functions. But maybe my son will like something with more functions. Sure, well, let's take a look. So you have no preferences at all? What about the size or colour? How about the brand? Well, I don't really care what brand the cell phone is, but I guess I don't want anything that's too big or too small. I want a phone that can fit nicely in my hand and in my pocket. If it's too big, it might be too heavy, and if it's too small, I might lose it. Colour, I don't really care about either. Well... I don't want a pink phone. Ah, OK. So let's look for something suitable for a working person. How about this one? This one is the R55. It is black, not too big, not too small, all the usual functions. The best feature of the R55 is that it can be used worldwide, even in Europe or Asia. It looks good. How much does it cost? It is only $100. If you sign up for a calling plan, then we will give you a $50 discount on the phone. How old is this model, though? I don't want anything that's too old. This model was introduced into the market about three years ago, so it is a bit older, but be assured it will still work fine. Well, I think I still want something not as old. How about from last year? Any good phones from around that time? Yes, there are some. How about this one? It's the new model of the phone you just looked at, called the W55. Most of the features are the same. There are some new features on the W55, though. The battery will last up to two days longer, and the overall weight of the phone is lighter. How much is this one? This is selling for $150. If you purchase it along with a phone plan, then it will be only $100. OK, I think I'll take this one. Now, I need to pick up a phone for my son. I think he'll want something more trendy, so how about a new model for him? Nothing too extravagant or expensive, though. This right here is the newest offering from the leading company in the cellular phone business. The phone is called the Rocket. It is well suited for teenage users. Among the teen-friendly features are 10 songs to choose from, a free messaging system that allows friends to send text to each other, and voice recognition dialing. The thing most younger users like about the Rocket is that it has a screen that changes colours. All this for only $100 with a purchase of a one-year phone plan. Sounds like something my son will like. Can I sign us both up at once? Yes, of course. Both of you can share one plan. You will pay only $50 a month for both of you to share a plan. That's it? Only $50 a month? Yes, that's all. Now look at questions 7 to 10. Now listen to the tape and answer questions 7 to 10. OK, I will need your information. Name and address, please. Richard Derek Jones. What's your profession? I'm an engineer. Address, please. 322 First Street, San Francisco, California. And phone number, please. 621-360-7700. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong number. 
How many phones do you want activated onto your plan? Two for now. Thank you very much. Your phones will be ready in a minute. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a recorded message giving information about an area where tourists can visit to taste local food. First, you will have some time to look at questions 11 to 13. Now listen carefully to the first part of the message and answer questions 11 to 13. Welcome to the tourist information line for the Valley Food Trail. Here you will find many local food products for you to sample and buy. It is possible for you to spend as much or as little time as you want, but I suggest that you allow a full day for touring this area. Of course, there are many half-day tours available for those of you short on time. Now, it's quite a large area and stretches from Brookville to Ford Hill. For those of you unfamiliar with the area, that means that it is 10 kilometres to 35 kilometres from the city centre, or by car 15 minutes to the closest point, continuing to 55 minutes at its furthest point from the CBD. Of course, apart from food, there are many other places of interest in this area, including cafes and restaurants and galleries and studios. But I wouldn't recommend you go here to see parks and gardens. The other information lines will give you specific information related to these particular attractions. Before the final part of the message, you now have 20 seconds to look at questions 14 to 20. Now answer questions 14 to 20. But let's go back to food. If we begin in Brookville and head north towards Upper Valley in a clockwise direction, passing West Valley on West Road, we cross over Coast Road to come to our first place of interest, Magic Coffee. This is not to be confused with the coffee house, situated opposite on the other side of the valley on the railway line. Magic Coffee is next to the chocolate company, which is on the corner. Just past the ice cream shop on the corner of John Street is the fresh produce shop. A little further north, we have reached Ford Hill, where we can start our drive southwards along Great Northern Highway following the railway line. First, we come to the organic market near the corner of Memorial Avenue and then to Olive Farm opposite Olive Road. Just before we come to the next street crossing, we see the Honey Pot, which is practically opposite the coffee house. There is another chocolate company which sells nougat as well, just nearby. Following the railway line along Great Northern Highway, we return back to Brookville. Now, as I have said previously, if you only have a few hours to spare, there are several places that you shouldn't miss. The two chocolate places make equally nice chocolate, but the factory has the added bonus of nougat, unlike the company. 
Of course, everyone loves ice cream, especially unusual flavours such as coffee and nougat. So the ice creamery is definitely worth a visit. And while the coffee house sells expertly made hot drinks, including hot chocolate, I think your time would be better spent sampling the many products on offer at the organic market. Well, I hope you enjoy your time visiting the Valley Food Trail and enjoy all the wonderful local foods on offer. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You'll hear an introduction about canoeing. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Have you imagined paddling around on a river in a small boat? Canoes, which are narrow boats and usually hold one or two people at the most, are particularly well known for being unstable and turning over in the water. But more and more people enjoy this dangerous sport. Today, Cynthia Bocci an adult education teacher and an addict of canoeing as well will share her experience of canoeing with us. Cynthia, when did you begin this sport? Well, I started it six or seven years ago, and soon I got attracted by the exercise. I have to admit that it brings me great fun. It's become part of my life. So, could you describe how you do it? At first, I think you need some like-minded friends. The friends who share the same interest with you. It's no fun at all if you canoe alone. Usually, we assemble in a parking shelter near the Island Lake Recreation Area. We pull our canoes from inside the vans, lift them from atop the cars and trucks, and attach wheels to help transport them to the shores of the lake beside the boat dock. What equipment do you need for the sport? Well, first and foremost, a canoe, of course. The price ranges from £300 to £700, depending on the material they're made from. The more you can pay, the better, really. Personally, I wouldn't look at anything under £500, but that obviously depends on your budget. You also need a hard helmet to protect yourself against rocks when you fall out of the canoe, and believe me, that is very likely to happen. Because of this, it's a must for a beginner to wear a wetsuit. Oh, bathing suits don't work, really. Sometimes a life jacket is a necessity, in case you fall into water and no one else is nearby. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. Think it's all worth it? Absolutely. I just love it. It's exciting, exhilarating, yet it's peaceful and it's calm. You can work as hard as you want to or you can take it easy. In addition to having fun, canoeing offers a workout without realising you're working out. Besides being a great exercise, which is good to heart and lungs, you gain strength and mobility. You build strength not only by paddling, but also from lifting and carrying your canoes. You can also exercise your mobility. 
Frankly, I never had upper body strength until I started canoeing. Now I can pick my canoe up and carry it on my shoulder with no problem. However, it's not just a workout of the upper body, but also a total body workout. If you're doing it correctly, it's a great calorie burner. And more important to me, paddling isn't strictly about exercise. It's as much about the peace and relaxation that comes from being out on the water. I saw it described on a brochure as liquid medicine for the soul, and that is so accurate. It allows you to take a mental break from your ordinary routine. It's a lot of fun, and you meet a lot of great people. We connect on the waterways by responding to email invitations, posting on websites, and club announcements. Also, it's a great way to get an up close view of nature. You can sneak up on wildlife. I've been right next to ducks, deer, and all kinds of birds. You just get a different view than you can get on land. I especially enjoy camping by canoe. It's like backpacking without having to carry a pack on your back. You can put everything you need in the hatches of the canoe. Have you experienced this kind of camping? Well, whatever you say about this sport, it's never dull. I think on one level it's a serious activity and you can become a real champion, but it's a small group who take it that far. But for most, it's a fantastic sport for anyone who likes adventure. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You will hear part of a lecture on the current and future use of mobile phones. You now have thirty seconds to read questions thirty-one to thirty-five. Okay, now today we're looking at changes in communication, and specifically changes that have just happened or are likely to happen in the next few years. Key to this is the mobile phone, which is increasingly being seen as an all-purpose system rather than just a phone. If you only use your phone for texting and making calls now. You will be amazed at how you'll be using it in the future. The technology has been developed for a range of other uses. For example, phones could be used so that if you are meeting someone and they get lost, you could send them a map of your location to help them. This will save all those complicated explanations over the phone. And our poor friends or colleagues trying to drive and find out where they are at the same time. And if you get bored waiting, or if you're traveling, for example, you will soon be able to see TV news on your phone as it is actually being broadcast. This means that you won't have to miss any of your favorites if you are away for a few days. Most people have got used to texting now. And young people send pictures to each other, but what is exciting is the possibility of putting music with them before you send them. And it's not all frivolous. Phones are going to become even more critical in business and education. Some recent developments have a highly practical usage. So, for example, as lecturers, we will be able to send everybody a text. To let them know if lectures have been cancelled, 
And the new phones could have a further use in education, as well as business, as they will enable us to go to any destination, such as when we are doing a field trip, for instance, and from there to send data directly to a computer so that we can access it when we get home. This means we will no longer be limited by what the phone can store. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 36 to 40. And it's interesting to look at the different ways that men and women use phones now as that does affect how the technology will develop. Some research has been done on how people use phones and some of the results are surprising. One of the increasing usages of mobile phones is to get all sorts of data such as phone numbers, the weather, train times, etc. And while there's been an attempt to set up connections with things that women might be interested in accessing, it is overwhelmingly men who do this. But what about the traditional use of a phone? To speak to people? I suppose we would predict that it is mainly women who use phones as a method of contact for friends and family, but, in fact, the genders exploit this facility equally. I've spoken about the increased business usages that phones will offer, and I suppose we would associate this usage with men. The survey picked up, though, that women are often working from home or catching up with work in the evenings, so they use phones in this way as much as men do. Most of us are aware we can store photos on our phones. It's an ideal method of capturing a moment wherever you are. Women tend to be the group that keep photos on their phones, but it seems that men use their phones to actually take pictures much more than women do. And of course, all this knowledge affects the marketing that the companies will do in order to sell That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute. Hello everyone, welcome to Team Oil Stream. I'm RP and you are watching the IELTS Listening Test channel. Today I'm going to explain how to write task 2 in essay. And statement for essay is Here is it. If your dream is to acquire band 77 plus, this video is for you. So this is statement. Today many people don't realize how important the natural world. Why is this? How can people learn more about the importance of natural world? So this is how I have written introduction. Environment is undeniably inevitable for all living organisms. In the modern era, the vast majority of population is not conscious regarding the importance of natural environment. This essay would discuss and analyze the cogit and possible solution to make people aware of the significance of natural world. To commence with the lack of education and awareness. Lack means shortage. Lack of I mean they are not educated enough. Is the root cause of this problem. Root cause mean main reason. To elaborate, people are not aware of the negative consequences of overusing fossil fuels continuously, which emit poisonous gases leading to global warming, which in turn poses serious threat to the natural world. Nice. 
and I have highlighted some important expressions so that it can be easy for you to learn and remember and you can use it in your essay and get desired band score. Besides this, the reckless cutting of tree, reckless cutting of trees, it means continuous cutting of tree by large population clearly show the ignorance of people regarding environmental issues. They are clearing large ground only for their own habitat which states that they are not conscious regarding the environment con conservation. They must plant more and more trees wherever they find space as trees are one of the major life supporting system on earth. Nevertheless, several steps are available to resolve the issue. Firstly, the government should make people aware regarding the significance of natural world. By organizing awareness campaign at the grassroots level, which should teach them how to maintain a pollution-free environment. Secondly, environment related to subject or to be added in the school curriculum. School, school curriculum in school syllabus. In spite of this, the highest authority should educate people about the inevitability, inevitability of natural world, I mean how essential it is, by showing them how it is imperative for their lives. Imperative means very important. This is how I have written conclusion. In conclusion, I would like to assert that all these actions should be applied quickly so that ignorant people can know about the crucial role played by natural world. Nice. I hope this would be beneficial for you. This is the end of this video. But don't forget to subscribe our channel, like, comment and Please press the bell icon so that you can get notification of every new video. Bye-bye. See you.